Hey, I'm Mark Tillerson at Tillerson Consulting, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a supplemental feed for Google Merchant Center, Google Shopping, using a Google Sheet. Uh, so just very quickly, there's kind of three steps to this process. Uh, so the first is to create your uh, Google Sheet, um, and I'll show you just how to do that in the quick way that I like to do it. Um, the second is then to amend or append the data in that sheet, and then the third is to create the supplemental feed in Google Merchant Center. Um, as usual, if you do get stuck with this, please do ask in the comments. If you need some help, then you can reach out to me and my team to help you get this set up or troubleshoot some issues you're having. Um, but please, if this does help you out, uh, we'd really love a thumbs up. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, the quick way that I like to do this, uh, there are a few different ways of doing this, but this is the way that I like to do it, is if you head into your all products uh, data and then hit this button here and download, what that will do typically is download a zip file. In that file, you will find uh, a, a tab separate, separated value file. So it's a bit like comma separated. So you want to extract that file first. I'm not going to bore you with that in this video. I'm sure you can work that out. Um, but then what you need to do is head into Google Sheets and then um, create, basically import that zip file. So what you're going to end up with is something like this, which is all of the data in that file that you just exported. Um, so this is the bit that gets uh, kind of really important, just something to remember here, okay, is that um, the supplemental feed will amend or append data. So what that means is, in this case, for example, the remember the source data is coming into Merchant Center from, in this case, Shopify. It's coming via the API and it's pulling in the title. Okay. Now, if we leave this title column here and on the website that title gets updated, this title will overwrite what's coming from that API. So that means if you want to amend the title using your supplemental feed, then you should leave this column in here. For any products that you want to amend the title, then leave these in. If there's anything you don't, then you can just delete that. Um, and uh, Or if you don't want to update any of the titles using this supplemental feed, then basically just delete that column, or if you want to, just rename it. So what Google is going to do, what Google Merchant Center is going to do, it's basically looking for the standard um, naming conventions it has for all the attributes within uh, Google Merchant Center and Google Shopping. So it's going to look for title. So if it finds a column for title for this product, it's going to overwrite the title that's coming from the website. So you want to be really careful uh, about what you are amending and appending. So one thing I would definitely recommend is you get rid of this price column. If that's coming from your website and you update the price, you do not want to overwrite the price using a supplemental feed because it will be wrong and it will break. So I would recommend generally um, what you want to do is probably delete this column. Let's assume for this part of the video that you just want to append some data that is missing from your feed. So let's say that you uh, want to um, append uh, new um, as the condition of your products. Okay, so we're going to delete that column. We're going to delete the price, and all we want to do is be left with the uh, condition. Um, so what I'm going to do is basically I'm just going to delete everything else. So the one thing you do have to keep. So uh, this is what you might call the key in database terms, um, is you need, you need the item ID, the ID column. So you must keep this so that Google knows, that's the unique identifier for every product, is the ID. So it knows that what you want to amend or append into your data is uh, the condition for this ID. And then the condition here would be uh, new, new, that might be used for example. So you would go through and manually populate that uh, data. Now, you could, of course, add any other attributes you wanted in here that are missing from your data, and anything you add in here will append. So, for example, uh, we have uh, a supplemental feed here to add GTINs. Um, so those aren't provided in the data coming from the website, but we do need them. There's a whole section, three videos on our channel about GTINs if you get stuck with that. 
Um, but you can see we have the item ID in here. We have the item, uh, item title, not title. So this is just for my reference, so I know what it is. And the GTIN, I can put in whatever the GTIN number is in there. And then I can append the GTINs. But if you note, I have the ID numbers. Okay. Uh, then the titles, um, I can, because I've changed the title of this column to item title, that's not going to overwrite the title attribute because my attribute, my column title is called item title, not title. So that's just my own reference. So you could you could just make that um, if you wanted to title uh, hash do not import. Google's not looking for that, it's just looking for title. Um, and then I can just put the GTINs. So that's very quickly how to then create uh, your sheet. Um, in this case, this particular one, I just did this manually. I grabbed the um, IDs for the products with missing GTINs that Google wanted. I pasted uh, those in with the title so we knew what they wanted. And all I would have to do then is create uh, a column called GTIN. That has to match the attribute name exactly, so Google knows what it is. So that will pull that in from the GTIN and it will then append that data to these products and I will solve my GTIN problem in this uh, case. So uh, something I could do if I wanted, so that's how we append data. Um, if you did want to amend data, for example, what we might do there is, let's just get rid of that column. What we might do there is say, here's my new title. So let's say that um, the titles of your products on your website are not particularly um, optimized, they're not particularly optimal. Maybe they're all in caps and they look a bit nasty, look a bit horrible and Google doesn't really like them. Maybe that's difficult to change in the website source data. So you want to amend those um, titles using a supplemental feed with your Google Sheet. So what you would do here is create your two columns for title and description. What you might want to do is export that data. Um, obviously, I uh, just deleted those. Um, in fact, let's just go back a few steps. Okay, put all those on there. So I'm going to get rid of all of those, except as my description. Uh, let me just uh, delete that column. And then uh, this is Google Product Category. So we can get rid of all of those other columns because we don't want them. Um, of course, you can keep them. I would just be really careful about that then overwriting data that you don't want it to. Um, also, just to note, the column order doesn't matter. So you can do what you like with that. Um, but if you wanted to, you could then start creating optimized titles and descriptions for all of your products to help with the matching algorithm in your Google Shopping campaigns. Equally, you may want to append custom labels and maybe you want to segment in your um, Google Ads campaign by custom labels or maybe product type if that data is missing or maybe product category again if that product data is missing. So if you're going to amend or append kind of lots of information, I would recommend keeping that in one sheet. Um, otherwise, you're going to get into a bit of a mess. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that's basically our sheet created. So we now have, um, let's say, our new item titles and descriptions. And let's say that I also did um, availability. Uh, let's say, um, uh, yeah, let's do not availability. Let's do uh, got myself a little bit confused there. So let's say that uh, we wanted to create the attribute um, condition. So let's put that in there and then we can just say it's new, it's new, uh, use, new, whatever it might be. Okay. So um, what we're doing here is, so this sheet, if I were to then add this to Merchant Center, um, I would of course give this a name so I know what it is. Um, we know this ID and what this would do is then uh, amend, so it would overwrite the item title coming from my source data. It would overwrite the description coming from my source data and then it would append or overwrite the condition. Um, for those items as well. So sometimes you're going to have missing data, in which case you want to create the columns and append. Sometimes you are going to want to amend data that exists. 
But remember, please, 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 because this will cause you problems if you don't do it, delete any of the columns uh, that you do not want to amend or append and keep that nice and simple. Otherwise, what can happen is your item you're selling for 1099 um, is in your feed as 1099, you export the data as 1099 today, and you leave the price in there as 1099. In three weeks' time, your price increases to 1199, your feed says 1199, the data in your file is then going to amend that price to 1099, and then you're gonna be advertising it at the wrong price. Two things happen there. One, you're going to get a price mismatch error, and Google's going to get a bit funny about that because then what you're saying is 10.99 in the data you're providing Merchant Center, but 11.99 on the website, and Google's going to give you throw an error there, and you're going to wonder what happened, and you're going to get yourself into a mess. So please, please, please delete the columns that you don't want to keep, um, you don't want to amend, and you don't want to append. You can leave the um, the cells blank if you need to. So anyway, we now have our sheet. So the next part uh, of how to add or uh, create your supplemental feeds, so we've got our sheet already, and you just head into feeds, add a supplemental feed. You can uh, pick Google Sheets. Um, let's call this test, just for my demo. And then I can select an existing sheet, and then pick the untitled spreadsheet there. I can create uh, an upload schedule, so I recommend that you do this daily. Uh, you can do it weekly if you want, but no reason not to do it daily, really. So you want to time this after your uh, other data is being fetched. So if you are fetching um, every 24 hours uh, from your main feeds, you want to set this to run possibly an hour after that. Um, but I'm just going to leave that as the default. And then what I'm going to do there is pull those through. Um, supplemental so what data do I want to supplement which feeds pick the feeds you want to supplement and then that will um, create the feed for you okay and now we have our link Google Sheets I can go and open that and I can amend it later on and we've got our test feed I'm going to delete that really quickly So we then have our supplemental feed added. That's going to be scheduled to collect every 24 hours. That's going to amend or append your data. Now, some issues with using supplemental feeds that you need to consider. Um, so I will always advocate, if you want to uh, amend, append data, if you want your data to be better, if you want to optimize your data in Google Merchant Center to help you in your Google Shopping campaigns, then you really, really should um, fix the data at source. And the reason that I say that is that if data is coming from your website and then you are amending and appending using a supplemental feed or by um, adding additional data using Google Sheets as primary feeds, um, or you are creating rules in Merchant Center, then you are going to, at some point, um, create a headache. Um, so what's gonna happen is you're gonna find there's an issue with something and you will then have to trace back through, well, look at my data in my database in the website. That looks all right, but then I've got, hang on a minute, I've got a supplemental feed, and then you're gonna try and find out what that is, and you'll have to troubleshoot multiple steps to try and find out where the problem is. So generally speaking, I wouldn't recommend using supplemental feeds unless you absolutely have to. Um, the other challenge that you are going to get is that, of course, your e-commerce store is going to have new products added to it those new products are not in your feed. So you are, uh, sorry, not in your supplemental feed. So what you're then going have to, to have to do is every time you add new products to your website, are those that are gonna come through your primary feed, 
you are then going to have to add those new add new rows in your spreadsheet um, in your supplemental feed to then add supplemental data to that so you're going to have to manually add data every time you add a new product to your website which is a bit painful the other thing that's going to happen as well um, that can happen is you're going to start to get a, a few errors potentially where you have created a product let's call it id1 um, you've amended some data or appended some data but that product id actually doesn't exist anymore in the primary feed maybe it's gone out of stock never coming back so now you have supplemental data for a product that no longer exists so keeping those in sync is going to be a bit of a headache um, there isn't really a workaround for that um, except to uh, do some kind of rules and uh, do some formulas in google sheets to compare different data things like that so generally speaking i would strongly recommend that if you are missing data in your feed add it to the source avoid using supplemental feeds if you possibly can um, so if you have a big inventory then that's especially important if you have a smaller inventory so maybe you have five or ten fifteen products maybe twenty products and there's not much kind of fluctuation in stock and availability and everything else then it's probably okay you can probably get away with that um, but that is uh, just how to uh, create a Google Sheet and use that as a supplemental feed um, in Google Merchant Center. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you do have questions, as I said before, please do ask in the comments. And if you're stuck with Google Merchant Center, Google Shopping, um, reach out to uh, myself and my team. Um, you can find us at tillerson.co.uk.